Okay, um, I've been asked today to, to uh, touch on a subject that seems to be um, kind of scary to some folks, including myself, and it is um, uh, the Old Testament. And so, if you look at your Bible here, the Old Testament is, that's the thick part, and the New Testament is the thin part. So we're going to talk about this thick part. One of the things that I've been asked over the, uh, the years is, why is the Old Testament important? You know, if, if you got an old car, you usually trade it in for a new car. So we've got the New Testament. So why do we even need to refer back to the Old Testament? Well, um, just because it's, it uses the word old doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we need to, to get rid of it. Every book in the Bible is divinely inspired. The Bible is not a book in itself. It's a collection of books. And in the Old Testament, um, as a Catholic, we, uh, we recognize that there are 46 individual books in the Old Testament that we recognize. Now, that's a little different than uh, most Protestant um, faith traditions. Uh, they recognize 39 books in the Old Testament. And there's a whole, that could be a whole nother class, and I'll let your teacher maybe uh, uh, go over that, or maybe, maybe you can look it up yourself. All, every book in the Bible is divinely inspired. Now, what that means is that that means that these are the words of God. So even though we might refer to an author, that's someone that is actually putting it down on paper, the ultimate author is, the, uh, is God. The Old Covenant has never been done away with. The Old Covenant has been fulfilled with the New Covenant, the New Covenant meaning uh, Jesus. And uh, I'm sure that uh, one, of your, one of your classes will somehow tie those two together, but... Um, in the meantime, uh, we'll stick with the Old Testament. Let's talk about a covenant. What, what is a covenant? A covenant is a binding agreement between one person and the other, two parties. In the Old Testament, it was God's choice to enter into an intimate relationship with Israel. So that, the intimate relationship is considered a covenant. Um, God makes certain promises in this covenant, um, and uh, and He also uh, His promises are usually accompanied by signs and or pledges, um, and but they're conditional. Uh, you know, some of these uh, promises are conditioned on human obedience, and um, and sometimes there are severe penalties for for disobedience. So. If we break down the Old Testament, we're going to start with, um, with some terms. One of the terms is called uh, the Pentateuch. And that is considered the first five books of the Old Testament. And uh, the, uh, uh, the P-E-N-T-A equals five. So uh, that's where that terminology comes from. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Uh, that, those are, are, are called the law, and there's a reason why they're called the law. Um, there's a historical uh, set of books in the Old uh, Testament, and there's a whole list of those. And again, that'll be in your handout or whatever they decide to put on that slide. And, 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 and those books tell the history, the entire history of the people of Israel. And uh, what you will see in there... Uh, there are many uh, trials and tribulations that the, the folks of, of Israel struggle quite a bit. Uh, then there's a set of books um, called the Wisdom Books, and that is uh, the Book of Job through the Book of Sirach. And uh, those books consist of uh, uh, religious essays and, and poetry about uh, God's relationship with Israel and, and with humanity. Okay, the last section of books within the Old Testament are about the prophets. Um, and um, you can actually take those books and categorize them with major versus minor prophets. And that's a whole other class on why that is. But uh, the, uh, the book of prophets goes from the book of Isaiah 
all the way to the book of Malachi. Th those prophets in those books, those were God's messengers. God uh, took those folks to speak for him. And, uh, and, and, and through those, uh, those prophecies that he urges the Jewish people to be faithful to the covenant. One of the first uh, major characters in the Old Testament we're going to talk about is Noah. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard something about Noah. In fact, I think in 2014, there was a major motion picture about Noah, which I never saw. Noah Flood Ark. That's what most people know about it. Well, so he told the people that he basically would wipe them from the earth. That's in Genesis chapter 6. Remember, we said earlier that uh, the, uh, the promises of the Old Covenant, they had some... Uh, some uh, stipulations in there. You know, it, ba it was based on the obedience of the people. So God found favor with Noah because the Bible says he was a righteous man. And they told him, God told Noah to prepare. So we all know this. He prepared by building this giant boat we, we call an ark and to take uh, the, uh, all the land, all the animals of the land and the air and the sea and bring two of them in and fit them in this boat and it's going to tread the waters of the great flood to save them, wipe out the rest of humanity, and whatever's left, repopulate the earth, and all would be good, right? Well, that didn't turn out that way, but that was a good start. Okay, the next two characters in the Old Testament we're going to talk about is Abraham and Isaac. Now, um, to me, Abraham is the most famous, next to Moses, of the Old Testament figures, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. But Abraham was called by God to be the father of God's nation. Abraham and his wife, uh, Sarah, um, were very old when they had Isaac. We'll go over that in a little bit. But um, uh, so what most people know about Abraham and Isaac is that Isaac was on the other end of the sword. So uh, God tested Abraham. He... Um, there was some, some real issues with Abraham getting a son, and we'll, we'll go with that in a second. So one of, what most concerned Abraham was the lack of descendants. He had no descendants. So he finally gets a son, Isaac, and, and, uh, and what does God tell him to do? God tells Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, meaning kill him. And so uh, that's what a lot of people in, in their mind, they, they see about Abraham and Isaac. But... Um, so Abraham was very obedient and, and, um, and, and, and even went to the point to sacrifice his son Isaac. And, um, but uh, basically God stopped him at the last minute and saved him based on Abraham's uh, faith and uh, faithfulness to listening to God. So, um, so after that, God blessed Abraham uh, and told him that his family would multiply and be a blessing to the whole world. So, as I said earlier, I think Abraham, to me, next to Moses, is probably the second most famous person in the Old Testament. But some interesting facts about Abraham that, that, that you may not have known. So, um, Abraham really doesn't come onto the scene until he's 75 years old and childless. Uh, I think he's 75 when we first meet him in the Old Testament, and um, uh, his wife was uh, was uh, very old as well, and his name was changed. He actually was called Abram, and his wife, Sarah, was Sari. Am I saying that right? Sari? I think so. I think so. So uh, if not, we'll edit that part out. But I think his name, her name was Sari. So... Um, even in, uh, in Abraham's life, there was scandal and there was times where his faith uh, uh, was questioned. In the same way that uh, Abraham's name was changed from Abram and Sarai's name was changed to Sarah, uh, you might want to look up your own names because uh, uh, most names have, a, have a, 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 some type of significance. Uh, not all, but most names are of a, a Christian or Judeo-Christian origin. So... Um, in fact, if uh, your parents probably, before they named you, took out a little book to see what your names were before they named you that. Okay, the next uh, character in the Old Testament we're going to talk about is Moses. 
Now, what uh, Moses is to most people um, is the Charles Charlton Heston character in the in the movie The Ten Commandments. So, it's a good movie if you haven't seen it. It's old, made probably in the fifties, but uh, but uh, uh, so Moses uh, came to the world through that uh, motion picture, and uh, but uh, uh, the, the 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 thing about Moses was that um, Moses main his his mission was to he was called by God to lead the Israelites out of slavery and um, and that would out of slavery out of Egypt into the promised land God spoke to Moses the Ten Commandments um, on Mount, Mount Sinai Exodus chapter 20 um, uh, a lot of you in here probably saw Raiders of the Lost Ark if you go back, uh, the Old Test there's a lot of Old Testament in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, they were trying to protect the Ark of the Covenant, which housed the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai, threw them at the people. They broke up, they put them in the Ark, and they had some special power after that. So that movie was loosely based on that. And another interesting thing about Moses is that uh, Moses didn't consider himself a great orator. In the movie... Charlton Heston is a great orator. He he speaks with command, and uh, it, you you you're you're drawn into his words. He's got that deep, slow, methodical voice. Well, the scriptures tell us that Moses himself said that um, I got tongue-tied, and words are are struggle for him. So, um, you know, it's likely that he had some type of speech impediment. Or, uh, or maybe uh, stuttered or, or struggled in, in, that, in that way. So if Moses had a speech impediment or whatever, look, he was called to do great things. So uh, think about what that means in our own life. That a lot of, um, there's always some talent or God-given um, God talent that, 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 that we're called to use. It may not be public speaking. It may be something as, uh, that you might think is very simple, but in the great magnitude of things, it means a lot. Um, you know, Moses came from slavery, went to royalty, and went back to slavery again, and then ended up freeing, freeing the people. So, um, uh, so you know, take, take the Moses story in, into account, um, uh, and that's a prime example of why the Old Testament is relevant today. So one, one thing the Old Testament uh, made apparent is that the Israelites needed a savior. And uh, so you have uh, the, the books of the major and minor prophets. Uh, they predicted that God would send a king. God would send a Messiah uh, who would restore peace amongst their people, amongst the Jews. And uh, um, so from the time of these prophecies to the time the, the true Messiah, Jesus, came along was, was about 400 years. So... Um, in, uh, in the prophet Isaiah says that uh, he refers to a child coming, the Savior is going to come from a virgin. And this is, this is predicted, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And as we know from the New Testament, the virgin was Mary, and the Savior came from Mary, uh, Jesus. Um, and Isaiah prophesied that he gave that person, uh, that Savior, a name, Emmanuel, and uh, the meaning of Emmanuel is God amongst us, so God with us. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9, he talks about a Messiah coming, riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Uh, and so uh, we know uh, from the New Testament and from our Catholic faith and faith traditions, Palm Sunday, that's when Jesus rides into uh, Jerusalem on a donkey. So um, Zechariah, hundreds and hundreds of years uh, prior to that is prophesying this. And uh, even uh, some of uh, King David's psalms, uh, there's a psalm that, that, that talks about, it's Psalm uh, 22. Um, in there, it talks about the Messiah uh, having pierced hands and pierced feet and, 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 and casting lots for, for, uh, for the articles of the Messiah. And as we know that... Uh, uh, during the crucifixion, um, on our crucifix, you know, the image of Christ uh, pierced hands and feet, and we know that they cast lots for his, uh, 
for his clothing and robes. So again, uh, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament are, are one and the same. Um, the Old Testament is fulfilled by the New Testament. Uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, paragraph 129, it says that Christians, therefore, read the Old Testament in light of Christ crucified and Christ risen. It also goes on to say is that the New Testament is hidden within the Old Testament. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I uh, that note that stands out to me when I read uh, some of the Old Testament is that there's a lot of rules. Um, and I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments. That's only ten. Uh, I think it's the book of Leviticus that gives a hundred, hundreds. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of rules. What to eat, what to wear, what to drink, when to go out, when not. So, um... So, are, are any of those rules still applicable today? Well, obviously, the, um, we talked about the Ten Commandments are still applicable today. But um, the, 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 uh, the Old Covenant, a, a lot of those rules, if not the majority of, them, the majority of them, are not applicable today because we have the fulfillment of the New Testament. Your teacher may, may, may go into that on why we don't, abide by all the rules of the Old Testament. Uh, and there were reasons for them. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, we talked about um, uh, circumcision. Well, um, you know, at, at that time, to be part of God's people, you had to be circumcised. Fast forward to the New Testament. Baptism is the new circumcision. In order to be um, part of the church, you know, baptism is your entryway into the church. So it's a lot of little things like that that have been uh, substituted now with the coming of the, of the true Messiah of Christ. There's some new rules, not quite as many, but, um, but there is a correlation. So Mr. Mike, how would you explain the Old Testament in a short summary? What is your background knowledge of the Old Testament? Wow. Well, uh, let me give you a real high level uh, overview of the Old Testament in my little brain. Okay, so God's a creator. He created what he saw he loved. He loved it so much, he wanted to create something in his image. So he created two people, Adam and Eve, probably heard of them, but they screwed up big time. They One of them got killed, turned into a pillar of salt. They had kids and all that, but they screwed up. They did what They did something that God told them not to do. They ate the fruit. You know, beginning at the very beginning with Adam and Eve, the Old Testament is full of um, drama and, and, and death and destruction and wars and people killing one another and, and even really scandalous adultery and, and all, all kind of bizarre stuff. So, so what I see is that, you know, people just kept falling and God said, ah, we're starting clean again. We're going to wipe it clean. So he sends this old dude named Noah and he says, look, I'm going to save you because you're righteous. Get one of everything I made, stick it in a boat. I'm going to save it, and we're going to wipe it, and we're going to start from a clean canvas. So he did it, and guess what? It worked for a little while. They screwed up again. So, so as you can see, the drama of humanity has been going on for ancient, ancient times. So why is all this relevant? This kind of stuff still goes, still goes on today. I mean, what I just described to you is your, your, probably your 11 o'clock soap opera that's on television nowadays. It's the same thing. So we... We are fallen people, and the only way to get past that is, is uh, for the old folks was through the old folks, the Old Testament. They were really old folks, like 900 and something years. Uh, but uh, is 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 through um, through Christ in our in His church. Yeah. If there was a person in the Old Testament that I'd probably like to meet, um, there's two of them actually, but. Uh, um, you know, I like to fish, so I'd like to meet Jonah to see how did all that really happen. Uh, but the one I'd really like to sit down with is Job, because, you know, Job was, uh, Job experienced uh, more trauma in, in, in his life, but yet had, had faith. So there are those times when, uh, when you say, I just can't go any further, then, uh, then I think Job would, would be an inspiration. I have no idea what he would say to me, but you know that's somebody you could probably pick pick his brain for years and years and years, 
I never really understand it, but but it, it's fascinating to me uh, the uh, the level of his faith. What would you tell people who are intimidated by the Old Testament? Um, what I would tell people that are intimidated by the by, intimidated by the Old Testament, because people look at a book and they see this, you know, they see this is the thickness of the Old Testament, and this is the New Testament. So I'm just going to skip right to what matters in the New Testament. Well, you know, you, you really can't do that because, um, uh, again, the New Testament completes the story of the Old Testament. So say, let's say if you were watching. Uh, your favorite movie, and the favorite movie is two hours long, and you just jump to the last ten minutes of it. Um, do you think you really got out? You you think you really learned what what the what the author of that movie intended? Probably not. Yet you, you need the whole thing. So uh, don't be intimidated by the thousand words. It's okay when uh, it's okay to skip over a few things, and um, it's okay to reread. It's okay to take it. Uh, uh, you know, very few people in uh, in Christianity at our level have read the Old Testament from cover to cover. We've experienced and read the Old Testament over years. Uh, so, there, you know, uh, the best way is go to Mass. You go to Mass, you're going to hear the Old Testament. The, usually the very first reading that they're going to read to you in Mass is from the Old Testament. So um, if you're like me, uh, even when I was in high school, I started reading about the third page. I, this is like the ultimate uh, sleeping pill. I just kind of go to sleep. Well, um, and, and it's not necessarily because of the story. It's because there's so many words. So get out of the part of the, the number of words and get into the story. I mean, the Old Testament uh, is uh, it's, it's a real, uh, every book is a juicy novel. All right, thanks. I hope you got something out of this. Um, I'm not a theologian. I'm not a priest. I'm not a deacon. I'm not an ordained clergy. I'm just somebody that they ask, hey, Mike, come speak about the Old Testament. And look, if I can do it and learn some of it, you can do it and learn some of it too. Uh, one of the things I want to leave you with is this relevance. It is relevant. Moses is relevant. Abraham's relevant. Adam and Eve are relevant. It's all relevant. So uh, thanks for listening. God bless you and have a great rest of your lesson.